off rep. Superstars Media. My people, my people, my BFM people, now how on a day? I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Depending from where you're listening to the sound of my voice. This is the Biafra Superstars Media and I'm holding it down. I say may God bless Biafra and may God bless His Excellency Oyendo Mazenam the Kano. May God bless, 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 may God bless His Excellency, the Prime Minister of the Biafra Republic Government in Exile. His Excellency, E-S-N, Ekpa, Simon and Joku, for the job Simon is doing. Simon, I want to say we thank you. We appreciate you. We love you because we know in your hands, Biafra is coming. In your hands, Biafra is safe. And in your hands, when Biafra comes, the people of Biafra will rejoice. When I say the people, I mean the men, the women, the children, the old, the young, the sick, the poor, the meek, the gentle, the civilized and uncivilized. Those born in Biafra and those born around the bites of Biafra. We shall come together on that one voice, on that one accord and scream out for revolution and liberation. Lord have mercy. Today, my people... I want to bring to your notice because sometimes the zoo, they pretend like they don't know what is happening. As it was good for the people of Chagos Island, it will be, so shall it be, for the people of Biafra. I want to bring to your notice that our great lobbyist, oh my God, the great Jim Moran and the great Elias Gerasolis, they promised us, they spoke to our Prime Minister, and the cabinet and they promised that just as america was able to pressurize britain to hands off chagos island to mauritius that same way will biafra regain her freedom britain will be pressured we are doing the right thing we are on the right steps and britain will be pressured today i will bring a message a tweet from our great lobby, somebody I love so much, somebody I appreciate, I admire for the wonderful job he's doing for the people of Biafra. A Biafran by nature, I mean Mr. Elias Gerasolis. I will bring what he said on tweet. I will show you what the Zoom media are saying. And I will also give a masterclass presentation showing you a historical background of the people from Chagos, the Chagos Island. I may have to link up a bit of Biafran in them. I may have to do that, probably. But let's see how my presentation will take me. At this point, before we play what BBC are talking about, the stuff, the zoo government, I want us to listen to the tweets of Elias Gerasolis. Where he said, and I quote, The United States has played a key role in pressurizing the British to cede its claim over the Chagos Island in Mauritius. In exchange for securing a key U.S. military base in Mauritius, the U.S. is willing to force the hand of British in proper terms are offered. The U.S. can play same role vis-a-vis -vis squeezing British in support of Biafran independence. This will come and much sooner than you think. I love the last statement where he said, this will come and much sooner than you think. At this point, my people, you've heard from our lobbyist team, people who have even gone the extra mile. They are doing the role more than the lobbies. We now have a shoulder to lean on. In America, I see them as our brothers because they are playing. The, in fact, they have gone beyond their scope because they love us. They have seen that what we are asking for is genuine. They have seen that the contract we have with Nigeria, the amalgamation, expired in 2014. And right now, the zoo government, they are on borrowed time. Elias Gerasolis and a man I call the Maverick. The great Jim Moran, a man that when he speaks, the Congress, they listen. When he speaks to the White House, they open their doors and listen. 
when he speak all the different departments in America, they know who he is. He's been in the Congress for so many years. More than 25 years. He's a maverick. Somebody that has the ears of those in Congress. My Prime Minister, Ekpa Simon Njoku, I thank you for going the extra mile to get the very best among the best. We thank you because with the lobby team, we have been able to go so far. They have helped to push this movement to a very far distance. My people, my people, without any much further ado, let us start with the video of what the BBC is talking about in Britain. You know, Britain, they are very, very smart. They, they know how to, you know, paint a picture to make it look like they came with clean hands. But without any much further ado, let us listen to what the British Broadcast Company, I believe that's his name, BBC are talking about this great, you know, movement whereby the people of Chagos Island, they are regaining back their land. If you are ready, let's go there. Listen. The UK government has announced it is to return the Chagos Islands to Mauritius. Mauritius has claimed sovereignty over the islands in the Indian Ocean, which are around 500 kilometers south of the Maldives, since independence in 1968. The UK evicted its population of more than 1,000 people to make way for a US military base. The dispute continued at the United Nations and in international courts for many years. Well, with me is our correspondent, Andrew Harding, uh, one of the few people who've been to the Chagos Islands. This is a long-running story. Take us through this momentous decision today. It's an extraordinary story. As you say, it's been in the courts for a long time. It's one of those disputes that has sort of rumbled on in the background. Most people listening to this, watching this, will never have heard of the Chagos Islands, but they might have heard of Diego Garcia. And that's the island, the American military base, that is really at the heart of the dispute and at the heart of this breakthrough today. And that's how both the Mauritian government and the British government are framing this. It's about security, long-term in the Indian Ocean. So basically, in 1968, uh, back when Mauritius won its independence, it didn't get full independence because Britain kept back the Chagos Archipelago from Mauritius. It had already promised in a secret deal to give the Diego Garcia Atoll to the Americans for a military base. And since then, in the background, the Mauritians have been campaigning to get those islands back, to have full sovereignty, full independence, if you like. And the UN has already taken that very seriously. In recent years, though, as Britain has, for instance, embarked on Brexit, it's begun to lose international support. The African continent as a whole has really come together as well to campaign on this issue of anti-colonialism, to say Britain must end its last occupation of this last piece of its old empire in Africa. And that has, I think, galvanized a lot of international support. And finally, today, we have what both sides agree really is a historic moment. They've signed a deal. They still need to sign a treaty, um, but they basically done a deal on all the details. And if they put it in this very short um, announcement today, key is the fate of Diego Garcia, which the Americans will continue to operate from now for the next 99 years, whereas the British lease um, that they'd granted the Americans was running out in the next decade. Um, key also is the fate of the Chagosians, those thousand people you mentioned who've been forcibly deported from the islands back in the 60s and 70s. They will also now have the right to return there for the first time, and the Mauritian government will look into that and the viability of them living there. And thirdly and finally, I think this is fundamentally about this issue of international law. And Britain could sense that it was losing the room, it was losing support at the UN, at these international bodies. And so, under some pressure, it has come to this extraordinary moment. Hold it there. Under some pressure, Britain has come to this momentary moment. Under some pressure. Last time I told you, Mr. Elias Garcia said, America can still put the pressure on Britain to let go Biafra. Because the contract that we had with Britain has already expired. The amalgamation nonsense they did where they brought three different core nations and made them one. Something that from its inception, it has never worked. 
to Britain what you did that you called Nigeria. It's like bringing Russia, France, Germany together and make them one country and secretly tell the Russians they were born to, to rule. That was exactly what you did in that thing you called Nigeria. Since the inception, there have been hatred among the tribes, among the nations that you forced into one. There has been no love for my people, the Biafrans. And we are saying we are done with it. We want out because the contract is done. I will fall back. Let's continue with this broadcast. Then I'll take you down to the people of Chagos Island. They also have their own freedom fighter. The same way we have Enam Dekano, the same way we have our Prime Minister, Master Simon Ekba. The people of Chagos Island also have someone who is speaking on their behalf. If you're ready, let's go there. Listen. Freedom fighter, this gentleman you're seeing has done a great job, a marvelous job for the people of Chagos. Today we have Simon Neka piloting the affairs. We have our Prime Minister piloting the affairs for the Pierre France. This young man as well in Chagos Island has been the mouthpiece for the people. He has been the one, the figurehead, making sure that the cries of the people was listened to. And today, that freedom has come. Listen to a bit of what he said, then I'll continue. Are you seeing those things? Can you see the, re re the resemblance of the Biafran people? Because as well, Britain took some slaves from Africa, from the western side of Africa, down to Chagos Island. You will see a similarity of the Biafrans. Let's continue. Watch this. Hold it there. They've been living there since the 18th century. African slaves brought to the island to work on their coconut plantation. Pay attention, my people. Britain has been taking the Biafrans for a ride. Pay attention. What they've been doing to the Biafrans is deliberate. Mind you, as Hadid Okubo said, his father, his grandfather, they were specialists in selling the Biafrans as slaves. And you and I know that from the western side of Africa, that's where you have the Africans who are very, very strong to work in the field. And Britain deliberately was handpicking those from the western part of Africa. So what I'm seeing here, in my spirit, I could sense these are our distant relatives that were brought by Britain to this island. But let's continue. Take it back. Read. They stayed in the island as contract workers. This is the narrative given by Britain. Because there was no way to, to go back home. <laughs> it was a one-way trip. A one-way destination to the island. When they are freed, where do you go to? So when they were freed, there was no other place to call home than to remain in the island. And now they say to work as migrant workers. The language of Britain. Migrant, migrant, you migrants, the immigrants, all those things. This is the language of Britain. You can tell they are the ones giving this narrative now. I'm going somewhere. Just continue with me in this journey. Continue. Listen. Horrible death. See how backward and evil the Britain that you all love to associate yourself with. See, see the way they act. How barbaric they act. Yet in that zoo called Nigeria, you still choose the name given to you by Britain, your slave master. You, choose, you still love the name given to you by your colonizer, Nigeria. But look at what they, they were doing outside of Nigeria. Because most of you, you, are, you have chosen not to be historians. You, you love the God given to you by Britain. You love the Jesus given to you by Britain, your slave masters. 
So you have chosen not to open up your mind and see what Britain were doing to every other people. Every other nations in Africa, around the whole world. It's a taboo for you guys to still call yourself Nigeria. A name given to you by an oppressor, a criminal. A people from a tiny island that went around the whole world scavenging, peeling and stealing and looting from the people. They stole the wealth of the nation and they claimed something called the commonwealth. You, you Nigerians that believe in Nigeria should be ashamed of yourselves. And by God's grace, from the 2nd of December, we are the Bria friends, we're out. We are done with this nonsense called Britain and their so-called indirect rule. They killed everything on sight. Even the dogs were not spared in Chagos Island. But in the zoo, you, you claim to be journalists. You claim to be mis media men and the rest of them. But you guys can't even do a basic research. To understand that these people that called you Nigeria. These people that amalgamated you together. What was their intention? Why did they bring... A warring people, a different tribes, a different kingdoms, different nations. Why did they bring them together? What gives them the audacity to name us Nigeria? How can they? Oh my God. Ah, my God, have mercy. It's so painful that you guys are so stupid, myopic and backwards. When they say the black man is shallow, when they say the black man is to thought of a man, sometimes you, you guys get angry. But to call it space, space, sometimes you guys just act exactly the way they call you. That you are dying to keep together something created by Britain, a white man, a slave master, your oppressor, all in the sake of business. All they came to do was business. They don't love you. They came for business. They came to steal your resources. And they stole it very, very well. And guess what? They told a particular tribe they were born to rule. They told the Fulani tribe they were born to rule. And some of you still believe in Nigeria. Some of you say, God bless Nigeria. Nigeria must remain one. Nigeria go better. You guys disgust me. You claim to be educated, but you still say you believe in one Nigeria. Something created by your slave mamasta. It's like the devil creating something. And you are dying to keep what the devil created one. Britain is worse than the devil. I said it. Let's continue. Hear the story of these people. Today, they've gotten their freedom. Or they're in the verge of getting their freedom. But some, some of you imbeciles in that zoo, in that contraption called Nigeria, some of you living in a backward country where there is no light, no, no even food. Now you are hungry. You claim you are hungry. Animals. You guys did, you, you guys disgust me with a passion. You are dying to keep together what was created by your slave master. Una shame, they shame me. Your shame. Is shaming me let me say it in english the shame of nigerians those that call themselves nigeria their shame is shaming me i am ashamed of the shame emanating from that country called nigeria a very backward people they claim they have, they've got swagger they claim to be the best from africa but look at them in the way they rationalize. They are still following the footprints left. They are dying. They are killing for the footprints left by their slave master, Britain. Britain came to Africa to enslave you. After they enslaved you, they now colonized you. Get that in your stinking dirty hall. Skulls. Animals. You, you guys disgust me. Your colonizer, your enslaver gave you a name and you are dying to keep the name together. Your enslaver, your colonizer gave you a country. They brought th three different tribes together as one. And they made you one. Like God, they say you must remain one. Your name is Niger area, the area of the Niger. 
Nigeria, Negus, the area of the Negus, the Negros. After the river called Niger, behind that area of, of the river are where you will find a strong black man. Where do you find them? In the Niger area, the area of the Niger. And over time, Niger area became Nigeria, Nigeria, Niger area. And you animals are dying to keep it warm. Una shame the shame me. Let's continue. I will take you on this journey. Look at what a real people, despite they don't even have enough, look at what they are doing to free themselves. They are fighting to liberate themselves from Britain. But you guys, your politician, every other day, they are flying to Britain. When they want to do a debate for election, they go to Britain to tender in their CV to do a presentation in Chatham House. Be because you, you still love your slave masters. Man, I feel like insulting you, you guys. It will get into your head and allow shame to, at least shame. You, you guys should have shame. Pride. Have the sense of pride. How were you live, living before the coming of Britain? That's the question. What was your way of life before Britain came to enslave you and colonize you? How were you living before the coming of Britain? You animals, you've refused to ask those critical questions. But today, the people of Chadian Island, they are doing that. They are showing you how to be a man. How to fight to the end. Fight for what you believe in. Die for what you believe in. You animals. By God's grace on the 2nd of December. Biafra is coming. 2nd of December. This madness will end. This, this enslavement will end. From the 2nd of December. Our Prime Minister. Mazi Ekba Simon and Joko. We, we thank you. For the job you're doing. We appreciate you. To the lobbyist team, the great man they call Elias Garisolis. Also, the lead of the lobby team, a great maverick, Jim Moran. We thank you. We need you more. We, we need you more this time because the pain is too much. The suffering is too much. We have suffered enough. The same way you ask for freedom from Britain. You told Britain, give me liberty or give me death. That was the mantra. That was the slogan of America. When they were fighting for their own freedom from Britain. Their own emancipation from Britain. But this evil entity called Nigeria. The zoo. That's why we call them the zoo. An animal kingdom where they think like animals. They even think lesser than animals. A place where there is tribalism, nepotism, retapism, and the rest of the isms. A place where they refuse to develop as a people because of tribalism. And they are, they are saying they believe in one Nigeria. May God punish them and their one Nigeria. It's so painful. A small island that they are fighting for their freedom. Chagos Island and today, they are the verge of getting... Or regaining their land from Britain, a tiny island in Europe, and the so called giant of Africa is acting like an ant, loving their slave master. Very shameful and disgusting. I digress. Let's continue. And uh, the implication to them was that if they didn't go, then the same would happen to them. Listen to what they do. put it from your motherland and they put you in a prison. That's how nasty Britain is. And you guys love the name given to you by Britain. Man, you guys disgust me. My God, have my hold it there. This is where they are now living. When they were moved from, from their town, from their land. Look at how shanty they are living. That was the plan of Nigeria to the Biafrans after the Biafran War. Where they said no victor. No vanquish. They came with the three R. Reconciliation, rehabilitation, and the rest of them. The game, something they, they never did for, for us. 
there was nothing like that done for us. Their plan, their intention for the beer friends was to leave us in our ruins. For us to turn to the beggars of that land. For us to become the paupers, to live in shanty houses and areas. Because they've already, you know, destroyed our whole building. Our livelihood was gone. Biafra land was shattered to the ground. The intention of Nigeria through Britain was to leave us like the Chadians when they were moved or relocated to Mauritius. That was the plan. But the God we serve, the God of the Biafrans, was able to see us through. And today, all those that planned against us, all those that chose or planned to they connive to make us to become the beggars, the paupers, the almagiri of Nigeria. Today they are the ones crying. Today their children are the ones crying that they are hungry in Nigeria. They scream with the slogan, We are hungry. It means we are hungry. Today, the children of Bia France, we are waxing strong because we are serving the living God. What they plan for us has boomeranged and it's not happening to them, their children, and their children's children. But to call a spade a spade, what you are seeing the Chagosians going through to today could have been a child's play compared to what the Biafrans would have been going through right now because they destroyed all what we had. They destroyed our economy. When you have, they don't care how much you have in your bank. If you're a millionaire, you were given 20 pounds to eat and die. If you're a thousandaire, you were given 20 pounds. They don't care. There was no reconciliation. There was no reconstruction. There was no rehabilitation for the people of Biafra. We did it by ourselves through our God. So to the Biafrans out there who say, oh, they love Nigeria. Hello. You should love the God that set you free. You should love the God that blessed you, that took care of you at the time when you should be living in shanty houses like a pauper and become the laughing stock of those that believe in Nigeria. That's why till this day they hate you. They envy you. And they are saying, even though they know the government of Nigeria is not working, they want to remain in Nigeria just to despise you. They are angry that you succeeded in life. You were supposed to be the beggars of Nigeria. You were supposed to be the lowest class of Nigeria. You were supposed to be an outcast in Nigeria. But today, the God we serve has blessed us. The God has blessed us tremendously and today we are still the one pioneering the freedom the liberation of biafra and africa in a whole as goes biafra so does africa lord have mercy we just thank we need to thank god sometimes and appreciate what god has done for us the god of biafra has been kind to his children. Let's continue. I'm a of Chagos Island. You must have somebody out there who is fearless and he's doing a good job. Hanging on, on, on mango trees. That's the way Britain de describes or describes the subjects living in their own land. And you people in Nigeria, you, you think that same Britain loves you. You think you are special. You are the special child. You are the special baby. You are the special project of Britain. They love you. They love you more than every other people. That you are keeping the name given to you by your slave masters. I rest my case. For those who have ears, let them hear. For those who have ears, let them hear. My people, we are going home. Home is calling us. If it is good for the people of Chadan to be strong enough, despite them being very few in number, 
but they have come together as a collective under one voice under one umbrella they have taken the fight to britain and today they have won so far for the beer friends we have more than 50 million votes of beer friends who have voted for the referendum that is even more than the population times 10 of those from chago island my prime minister mazi ekma simonepa i want you to know that you are doing the right thing we are with you we support you we love you we shall live and die for you because we believe in you we know in your hands biafra is coming in your hands biafra is safe and in your hands when biafra comes like our distant relatives in chago island we shall rejoice we shall scream for hallelujah day we shall glorify the god of biafra for giving us this liberation for the people of god my prime minister simon ekba i made this video for you to know you're on the right path it doesn't matter the number of people who say yay or nay as long as you are doing the right thing you are a majority in the hand of god today we thank our lobby team all the way from america the great man they call elias gerasolis for his selfless effort and the maverick jim moran a man i love so much a man respected in america and the cool lots of others who have come together to say the children of god of biafra today this will be the year the beginning of our liberation from the second of december our freedom is coming we must get this freedom we are tired of being slaves in our own land we are tired of respecting our slave masters we are tired of being subjugated by a people strangers that britain has brought together to dominate over us my prime minister this is the time for us to come together all beer friends that believe in the biafra republic government in exile you have voted you were the ones that asked our prime minister and his cabinet to carry out the referendum it has been executed we have voted so far and so far we have more than 50 million votes i want us to stay together work together fight together collaborate together make sure we get this freedom this freedom is a must like the people of chad their company look at them now they are happy chagos is free the people of Chagos, they are free. They are free. One day to be the town of the beer friends. Our freedom is coming. And when this freedom comes, we shall rejoice in the morning, in the day, in the night. Rejoice without season. We shall be glad and thank the God of Biafra for doing it for us, the children, because we have suffered enough. Britain, we are telling you to let us go the same way. America has forced your hands to let Chago Island leave. The people should get their, their freedom and return back to their land. We are telling you, Britain, the contract we have with you is gone. It is done. It has elapsed. The hundred years amalgamation has elapsed. From 1914 to 2014, 100 years is already gone. We are now on borrowed time. Britain, you must let us go. Wash your hands of the case of Biafra. Allow the Biafrans to go. Those that love you, those that call you Nigeria, you can stick with them. Those that believe in Nigeria, you can work with them. You can continue to be their God and their colonial masters. But we, the Biafrans, we are saying we have had enough we believe in us we believe we can do it by ourselves we want to take our destiny into our own hands we are saying britain let us go we know you are behind this britain let us go and we thank god that our lobby team from america they are doing the job they understand the plight of beer friends. we are now working with the policy the beer friend policy with america you must have a foreign policy with america so my prime minister i second i agree with what you have said about the creation of our beer friend policy with america because they must know how we want to work with them how we intend to do business with them how are we going to, you know, discuss and, you know, legislate with them when our freedom comes? They must know how we shall roll and operate in an independent country. So the first thing that must be ironed out is a policy, a BFN policy with America. America will be our friends. America will be an ally. America will shall work like Israel is working with America. Today, Israel is safe because of their partnership and collaboration with America. 
so shall be the beer friends. We shall be friends with America because America has been there. They've been fair to us. They understand our plight. And today we have people in America who are supporting us. The great Elias Gerasolis, we thank you. I appreciate you so much because you are giving out, you are rendering a selfless service. I say to you, Elias, when Biafra comes, your name shall be written in gold. Your name shall be carved in gold. We shall thank you. We shall bless you. We shall bless your whole generation. You will be blessed in Biafra land because you are doing a great job. You have gone beyond the scope of your job. Oh my God. What a great man. What a good man. We thank you. My Prime Minister, Obatobi Agune Chamber. I tell you, from the very first day I saw you, I, I knew. I knew you were the one sent by God to complete the task of Anam the Kano when he was kidnapped by the enemy. You were the Joshua, the Yeshua of our time. You are the helper of Anam the Kano the same way Joshua was helping Moses. Simon Nekba, we are proud of you. Simon Nekba, our prime minister, we are proud of you. We love you because so far you are doing a good job and you are doing it doing it doing it well from me from here for now i want to say good morning good afternoon good evening and good night i remain yours truly biafra superstars media god bless you i want to use this opportunity to call on the committee for prayers for go on Number one in this committee is Dominica Olewune Chinyere Apo, Blessing Nzom, Grigori Onyejuwa, Chinedu Aguyi, and Presence Odohunoge. This committee will be the prayer, official prayer warriors for Gawon to be alive in December. Your prayer point is to pray day and night for Gawon to be alive till December. He will be alive and witness something in December of 2024. There is no other prayer point. Mazenam Dekano is going to come out in a historic manner. We have promised Biafra that the prayers that were prayed so far is working. And for the fact that Mazenam Dekano has not given up, believe me, I know what he is made of. Our most important prayer today is for Gowan to be alive to December. Let him not die. It is very, very important so that the prophecy of our eternal leader will come to pass. You will be alive to see Biafra. Yeah, check me out. Superstars Media. Oh, Lord Logan. Bloomington Lord Logan. And it's why Flora Show. 914 Amalgamation is what we dying for. Three nations to one nation. Ever since annihilation, nepotism is nonsense. You and you clap your hand, clap your hands. Biafra gonna come, clap your hand, clap your hands. Uh, Biafra, Odudua, we're free now. Freedom is gonna come, we're free now. Yeah.